Serena during the afternoon and then extend inland overnight. People between Cape Melville and Serena extending inland to Croydon and Richmond should complete preparations quickly and be prepared to shelter in a safe place. Boats and outside property should be secured. Disaster.qld.gov.au a very useful source online for information. The SES number 132500. For people living further inland, west to the Northern Territory border and north of Winton should consider what action if the cyclone threat increases. The information is available from your local government, disaster.qld.gov.au 132500 for the SES. If you're plotting the RC on the map, for a 16.4, 16.4 degrees south, 149.9 degrees east, and uh, moving west-southwest, 30 kilometres per hour, wind gusts near the centre, just under 300 kilometres per hour at the moment, a Category 5 with central pressure, 922 hectopascals. Please ensure that your neighbours, your colleagues, your family have heard and understood this message, and particularly people for whom English is not necessarily the first language or people new in the area, Jase. Thank you, Richard. Now, uh, we'll see if we can uh, get uh, Glenn Alderton uh, back up from Emergency Management Queensland. This is what he had to say. We'll send us in, we're filling up a bit sooner than what we'd like. Um, and we've, we found that a, there's a reasonable amount of people in the centres who probably should be still at, at home. Um, the centres are only really meant for people who have nowhere else to go and as a centre of last resort. Um, and we've heard that people have moved to the centres from homes that are in areas that really you don't have any storm surge issues so we just like to um, just reinforce that if people are outside of the, the storm surge zones the safest place to be during the cyclone would be in your own home and these centers are uh, center of last resort as the mayor has said new on numerous occasions and they're not an ideal place to be during a cyclone so just you know we'd really like people to to uh, have second thoughts about moving to them if they if they're out of the storm surge zone and and just shelter in their own homes. Not out, not inside that zone. You stay at home, um, shelter in the smallest room in your house, put a mattress over your head, have your radio beside you, and and just sit it out in your home. Lunchtime now. We're very close to the onset of the rough weather, so there's maybe an hour or two left. The, the things that people should be doing at this time. Uh, what you should be doing now, if you're if, if still um you know make sure you've got your evacuation kit organized just in case you need to evacuate for some reason later on uh, have a cyclone kit with some some food that will get you through the next you know maybe 24 48 hours make sure you got your water make sure your pets are sorted definitely your yard should have been cleaned up well and truly by now now you should be just doing those final little things in, in your home just just to make you comfortable for when you're sheltering over the next 24 hours obviously in communicating with communities in a situation like this people are scared talk us through how you 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 the advice you give about keeping calm how important that is as this time approaches it's really important that you know especially if you've got kids around to, to as an adult stay calm um it's a it's a quite a serious cyclone we've got coming towards us but if if you make all the appropriate preparations um and you know you're sheltering appropriately in your home that's the safest place for you to be and you know if you've done everything that you possibly can well there's nothing more that you can ask yourself to do Glenn, thank you for your time, we'll let you go. No worries, thank you, Richard. From Emergency Management Queensland, that's Grant Glenn Alderton. You're listening to ABC Far North and across ABC Local Radio Queensland. We're broadcasting from the Cairns Local Disaster Coordination Centre. Jason Hagen and Richard Dinnan here with you this afternoon. At 23 past 12, the Cassery Coast Regional Council wants residents to know that the Disaster Coordination Centre at Innisfail is expecting to have to stop taking calls for assistance from the public around about now because emergency services will not be able to respond due to the expected strength of the winds and the associated conditions. Obviously, you don't send people out into that sort of weather um, to deal with things. Coordinators of the Disaster Coordination Centre are planning to recommence operations once the cyclone has passed. Members of the public are encouraged to listen to your radios, uh, battery-powered radios, obviously, and fresh batteries ready to go when you need them, and uh, keep listening to us this afternoon for the latest cyclone information. Um, the uh, Disaster Coordination Centre number is 1300 188 505 for the Cassery Coast Regional Council. Obviously, it is going to shut down in the next hour or so, but that's the number while it's still running. We go now to uh, Innisfail, the uh, Queensland Police Service Inspector at Innisfail, David Tucker. Good afternoon to you, David. 
Good afternoon. How's it looking out the window there at the moment? Out the window we're having uh, gusts of wind and uh, a bit of rain from time to time. Place is starting to look a little bit moist now. Um, and then of course there'll be those times where there's the stillness. So uh, I guess the message that I need to get out to people at this point in time is that, you know, it's getting about the time where they should actually avoid any road travel. They need to shelter in their own place of safety at this point in time. Um, unfortunately for those people that we've given numerous warnings to over the last couple of days, perhaps the time has actually now passed and we need to actually take stock, sit down and actually watch what's going on outside. I uh, know a number of the uh, police staff have uh, actually started to relocate to safe centres so that they will be ready to respond to this particular event after it is over. We know that the uh, uh, shelter there, the, uh, the State College, was opened up last night. Do you know, have the latest on uh, whether it's reached capacity? Uh, State College has reached capacity. The Shire Hall has reached capacity. The showgrounds, I believe, is just about at capacity. Um, and that's another one of the reasons why we're saying that, uh, you know, it is basically not safe to actually go out there now because the reality is is that there is going to be limited opportunity for people to actually access safe haven. Um, it's, it, it is very disappointing, I guess, from one respect that so many people have left it so late, um, but uh, we can only do what we can do. The Cassidy Coast Regional Council is obviously attempting to find additional uh, resources, but again, to actually get those, we are uh, having to look for additional key holders and a whole range of other things. And as I say, it's becoming very unsafe to be on the road. But we'll keep you up to date as to whether there are any other centres opening up um, later on, but uh, it's not looking very promising at this point in time. OK, the word could get around the possibility of the Innisfail showground being used. Is that going ahead, do you know? That is one of the places that has actually been used, and that's one of the places that's at uh, capacity at this point in time. Okay. And look, it's, it's uh, very unfortunate that there are buildings that we, we have actually considered. Obviously, the PCYC was one of those buildings, but the downside of the PCYC is that it's been, uh, had a number of extensions placed on it, and there's a number of holes that have been placed in it. And uh, we, we need to balance the, uh, the shelter part of it with a shelter that's actually going to be safe and withstand this particular event. And uh, obviously the more holes that you're placed in the building, the, uh, the more unstable it's going to be. They're some of the decisions that Castery Coast Council are actually making. They're very difficult decisions, but we're supporting them through those decisions and we're, we've only just got an awful one teleconference with them speaking about these very issues and how we're going to effectively manage it. All right, David Tucker, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. All the best to you. Inspector David Tucker, the Innisfail Police uh, District Inspector, speaking to us this afternoon. And uh, you are with ABC Far North, 6.30 ABC North Queensland and other ABC local radio stations around the state, 28 past 12, with news coming your way in a minute or so. We will continue to bring you the very latest information right throughout the afternoon. You'll hear a variety of voices here. We've got Jason Hagen, Phil Staley, Brad Ryan, Keir Shorey, Tash Impey's here. Uh, Jason, my colleague in yeah. broadcasting. And, and you're here too, Richard. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a piece of me, absolutely. Now, Richard, um, one organisation uh, who's always on the uh, on the go in these sorts of situations is the Red Cross. Uh, the Red Cross with Queensland Police has re-established the National Inquiry and Registration System to assist people affected by the cyclone and their families and friends. Now, to register and to make an inquiry, go to redcross.org.au or the phone number 1300 993 191. That's 1300-993-191. And uh, I know that people are listening uh, right around Queensland and obviously family and friends further away are listening or trying to listen to us as well. Remember that programs are being streamed on the internet so you can tell your family and friends down south abc.net.au slash local. You get a map of Australia there. You click on the locations up here, Cairns and Townsville, and you'll be able to listen to the program or have your family and friends listen to it in the uh, 
southern parts of Australia who I believe are enjoying something of a heat wave today. It is starting to get gusty in the Cairns district. It's a couple of hours uh, to the onset of severe weather. We urge you now please to be listening for the latest advice here on ABC Local Radio and acting on that advice coming from the Weather Bureau and the Emergency Management people. We have news in a few seconds. Terry, if you can carry us up to the year 12.30 and we'll be back with more from the far north after that. Thanks very much there, Richard Dinnan here on ABC Local Radio Queensland, where it's now news time at one o'clock. ABC News, good afternoon, I'm Gail Burke. Winds are starting to pick up in North Queensland as severe tropical cyclone Yazi powers towards the coast. The Premier Anna Bly held a news conference a short time ago and is reiterating that this is a life-threatening event. Chris O'Brien is at Emergency Management Headquarters in Brisbane and begins our coverage. Chris, what are authorities telling North Queensland residents to do? The warning is getting dire now because the extremity is becoming more and more obvious. Figures of 295 kilometres per hour in terms of winds are now being quoted. And the most recent forecast is that the cyclone will hit somewhere between Innisfail and Cardwell. The Premier says that's with 30 kilometres of accuracy. Dangerous swells, Gale, have been forecast as far south as the Sunshine Coast. In Cardwell, in the emergency area, there could be a tide surge just six and a half and seven metres above the high tide. Of course, the Met Gear, the Bureau of Meteorology at Willis Island has been taken out. So the 295 kilometre an hour winds have already destroyed the Met Gear on Willis Island. Cairns and Townsville airports have been closed. Mackay is still open, but it could close. And the effects are already being felt at air with power out and some trees down. Gail? Thanks, Chris. Around 9,500 people are sheltering in 20 evacuation centres between Cairns and Townsville. One of them is at one of the biggest shopping complexes in Cairns. Bruce Atkinson reports the, uh, from the Earlville shopping centre. There's currently about 2,000 people here. It's actually that full that they're getting a couple of buses to get people out and take them to other evacuation centres throughout the city. It's just a mass of people through here. Just every available inch just about on the floor is taken up by people where they've staked out their little area. Mattresses, pillows, shopping trolleys with some of their possessions in. There's even a couple of tents set up here as well in the food court. It's just a pretty busy, nervous sort of place to be. In all my time covering natural disasters, I've never seen anything like this with so many people in an evacuation centre. Bruce Atkinson, ABC News, Cairns. The Defence Force has established a joint task force to prepare for Yazi and to provide emergency relief after its impact. The task force will consist mainly of personnel from the Army's 3rd Brigade based at Townsville. In other news, Egypt's President Hosni Mubarak has declared he won't step down from power until the next election due later this year. Middle East correspondent Anne Barker reports. Thousands of Egyptians massed in Cairo 